Greetings! This is a short video to walk you through part 2 and part 3 of your lesson notes for graphing polynomial functions. You should have already done your best to graph these functions by using the hints and tips in your lesson notes, but if you got stuck or want to check your work, then you're in the right place. We'll start with part 2 where we're going to graph f of x without using any graphing software. As you saw in your notes, a chart like this one can help you organize your work. Because our function is currently in standard, non-factored form, we'll start by filling in the first three items in the chart. If you needed help on line 1, the wrap-up lesson on polynomial function basics should refresh your memory. We have an even degree function, so what does that tell us about the function's end behavior? Right. The ends of the polynomial will point in the same direction, and with a positive leading coefficient, which direction will that be? Up or down? Yes, the ends will point up. At this point, I often encourage students to draw a rough sketch of the polynomial, showing its end behavior, but without worrying about any other details. And what is the more formal way to describe this behavior? As x goes to infinity, or gets infinitely large toward the right side of the coordinate plane, y is also increasing toward positive infinity. And as x trends toward negative infinity, or gets infinitely small towards the left side of the coordinate plane, y is again increasing in the positive direction, or going to positive infinity. Now on to line 2. Plugging in a 0 for x and simplifying will give us the y-intercept, but remember that when a polynomial is in standard form, we can simply look at the constant term. Our y-intercept is 0, 14, and the fundamental theorem of algebra gives us the answer for line 3. The function has a degree of 6, so there will be 6 complex roots. Great! This is just about all we can tell about the function from its non-factored form. Let's look at it in its factored form. Sometimes you'll need to factor the function on your own, but here we've factored it for you so that we can focus on lines 4 and 5. In your notes, you should have already used the zero product property to find the function's roots. There will be single roots at negative 2 and negative 1, where the function will simply cross through the x-axis. And we can see that the factor x minus 1 has multiplicity 2, which tells us that the root at x equals 1 will be tangent to the x-axis. There were no roots with odd multiplicity, like 3, 5, etc. And since that final factor is an irreducible quadratic, you can use the quadratic formula to determine that this factor represents the non-real roots, negative 2 plus or minus i times the square root of 3. We can't graph these non-real roots, but I've listed them in my table anyway, because sometimes they can contain useful information. Before we graph, it's a good idea to double-check that we found all of the roots. In step 3, we determined that this function has 6 complex roots, and there are 2 single roots, 1 double root, and 2 non-real roots, which is our total of 6. That's perfect, and now we're ready to graph. Here are the key sections from the table that we'll need. I like to start by lightly sketching arrows showing the end behavior we already determined, which helps me begin generating a mental picture of what this function will look like. We know that both ends will point up, so I put in some light arrows that show the direction of each end of the function. Next, plot the y-intercept. Because we're sketching by hand and not using graphing software, don't worry about making the scale of the x and y axes match. Next, plot the real roots, negative 2, negative 1, and positive 1. We are nearly ready to graph, but it would be a good idea to do one more thing first. We know the function has a double root, or multiplicity 2, at x equals 1, which means that it will touch the x-axis and turn the opposite direction, instead of crossing through. This is also known as the function being tangent to the x-axis at x equals 1, and it will either look like this, or like this. 
Because there are no other real roots to the right, and our function is going to increase to the right, we know that the root at 1, 0, must look something like this. The function will cross through the x-axis in this direction at negative 2, 0. Cross through again in this direction at negative 1, 0. Pass through 0, 14. Be tangent at 1, 0. And then continue increasing without bound to the right. And with that, we are ready for our final sketch. Follow the direction of the arrows, passing through negative 2, negative 1, and 14, drawing the curve tangent to the x-axis at 1, and increasing up to the right. Great work! If you haven't tried graphing the second polynomial in your notes on your own yet, go ahead and do that now, using the same techniques you just saw here. Now we'll move to part 3, and we'll graph g of x as accurately as we can without using any graphing software. Be sure to try filling in the first three items in the chart on your own. What did you discern about its general shape? This time our degree is odd, so we know that the ends of the polynomial will point in opposite directions. With a negative leading coefficient, which side will point up and which one will point down? Since this function has been reflected over the x-axis, as x goes to positive infinity, y goes to negative infinity. And as x goes to negative infinity, y goes to positive infinity. You can draw a quick sketch if you like, or you might want to just have a few arrows as a reminder. These next two should be familiar. The y-intercept is positive 3, and the function has 5 complex roots. Okay, that's all we can do for now. Be sure you have tried completely factoring this function and filling in the sections on roots on your own before continuing with the video. If you need a hint on factoring, try using synthetic division with negative 1 in your small box, and come back to the video if you need help drawing the graph. Okay, here's the way I wrote g of x in its factored form. I had three separate factors of x plus 1, which I wrote as x plus 1 cubed, and a quadratic that I couldn't factor. I also factored out a GCF of negative 1. So which real roots do we have? To start, we have a real root of negative 1, but it has multiplicity 3, so we'll put that here. I don't have any roots with even multiplicity. And what about this quadratic that I can't factor? We need to use the quadratic formula to know if it contains real irrational roots or non-real roots. What did you get? I got two real but irrational roots. As simplified radicals, the roots are negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 7. But that will be hard to graph, so feel free to use a calculator to estimate those with a decimal value, rounded to the tenths place. I got 0 0.6 and negative 4.6. And since those are real roots, I know that this function doesn't have any non-real roots. Okay, now that we've gleaned as much information as we can from the factored form of this function, it is once again time to graph. Here are the key sections from the table that we'll need. Starting with line 1, let's add some arrows to remind us of the general shape of the function. Step 2 is to plot the y-intercept at 0, 3. Next, plot the x-intercepts. Remember, we're estimating those irrational roots, so we'll just try making a good guess. And it's okay if your graph isn't quite to scale. Before we graph, let's remind ourselves of what types of roots we have. The two irrational roots are single roots, so the function must pass through them in this direction, following the direction of the arrows. We also know that at x equals negative 1, the function makes what we call a saddle point and will look something like this. That means that we can now graph the whole function, following the direction of our arrows and the lines we've sketched in, making sure to also pass through 0, 3 along the way. Great work! 
I hope this short video helped you pull together everything you've learned so far about polynomial functions and how to graph them without using graphing software. In the next lesson, we will include the use of graphing technology, leveraging its tools to deepen our understanding of polynomial functions. See you then! Hey, hey.